All right, YouTube, not so slim Jim here again. I'm making a little side video so my other videos aren't too long. Plus, this might be useful to people who aren't necessarily building an Audi. I have myself here a Turbo Smart IWG75 wastegate. Now, the reason I'm bringing this video up, because as again, I did not see one in uh, the normal YouTube feed. And some people may be getting these and they need to change around the springs inside or have to disassemble this. And for guys who've worked of these, it's pretty straightforward. Um, for people who haven't worked of these, it may be something new and I mean, you know, so it's usual common knowledge, but for people who have it, I want to show how to disassemble one of these in case you need to modify the rod on them or you need to change a spring. So I'm going to make this quick little video on how to do so. Um, now there are two types or three types. You have one where it is the top nipple, one where it is a side nipple where it comes out the side and one where it has both in case you need to have uh, differentiating pressure between top and bottom to actuate it. This obviously being a top style nipple, it's pretty simple. It rotates whichever direction you need it. So that way you can index it towards wherever the feed line needs to go and then make sure it's snug. And that's pretty much about it. For the side indexing one, that's a little bit more difficult because in that case, you're actually going to have to have your bracket figure out where it needs to go and then modify your bracket to whichever direction you need it to be. That's a little bit more difficult unless it's not a big big uh, case where you have to have it where it's indexed. You can just take your line and loop it around or whatever. If that's the case, it's not a huge dealio. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this on my vise and I'm going to show you how to remove the top section, what the springs look like on the inside, the diaphragm, the whole nine yards on them, and how to remove this shaft right here. Okay, don't mind all the stuff in the back here. Uh, my wife is getting ready to donate a whole bunch of stuff, so we have a whole bunch of stuff back here. So what I'm using right here is called a cannon plug wrench. You can buy a wrench for I think around like 20 or 25 dollars directly from Turbo Smart that allows you to fit right on here. It's made of aluminum. It won't mar it up. This one, honestly, I already took one apart. It didn't mar it either. This is made of mild steel. It's slightly hardened. It may even be tool steel. I don't know. This is uh, from my time in the military. But these work fine. If you have neither and you don't want to spend $25, you can get a screwdriver or a punch and put some uh, electrical tape on the end of it put it on and lightly tap it and that'll work as well. It's real simple, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Get into a vise. I'm using soft jaws to make sure it doesn't get messed up. And just put some pressure on it. It's a little snug. Ah, hardest part is getting that first break. And from that point, start the assembly. Now there, this is a 26 pound wastegate for Cummings but I got it on sale from Amazon for 75 bucks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it with lighter springs. Now all the wastegates are still the same. It just depends upon what spring you put inside of it. And if you actually go and Google their spring setups, they have a, a comprehension list or comprehended list of different, whoop, there we go, different springs. So it's real simple. You have the ring right there, the top section, which is really on there, which has the diaphragm, the top, the nipple. Let me get this out of here now. All right, now for this one, I gotta take the nut off the bottom. This has three springs, and how it works is they have three different diameters of springs. They have an inside diameter spring, which for this one is, if I can get it out here, a five pound spring. Then they have a 11 pound spring and a 10, 10 pound spring. You add the three of them up, you get 26 pounds. What I only need is the 11 pound spring. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the extra springs that I don't need, putting them off to the side, and I'm gonna be running just the 11 pound spring. So just like that, I took a 26 pound wastegate and turned it into an 11 pound wastegate. Now, another issue what I need to do 
is I'm going to need to bend this rod, which I'm going to use heat to do so, but I don't want to do it when it's assembled because I'm going to have this on with the bracket and everything, and I don't want to mess up, one, the diaphragm, which it's, it's heat resistant, but it is heat sensitive. And you have the lower spring perch, and you have this little guy, which is the plug at the bottom, keeps dirt and everything out. So what we're going to do is we are going to remove this, which I am going to put back in here. And this is held in with Loctite. So I'm going to get it nice and snug in there. Then you can use, let me try to adjust the picture for you just a little bit, propane, map gas, whatever you need to, to be able to get it off. But you just need to be able to get it off. Now, this isn't a proper tool. This is just what I happen to have on me. So what you need to do is relax that Loctite a little bit. Now, this is aluminum, so don't overheat it. So I am going to... There we go, a little bit of fire. You only need about 10 seconds or so worth of heat, and that will re-liquify, come on baby, the Loctite. If you, don't, if you don't add heat to it, let me say it is a pain in the scrotum to get this guy off. Now there is a piece on the back side here to put a wrench on. I did not grab the wrench in advance. I started making this video. I didn't feel like doing another cut. Whatever, see how warm, ah, yeah, that's hot. There we go, YouTube. Don't grab hot metal with your fingers like a dumbass, like I just did. So I'm gonna keep turning this guy. I'm gonna grab my bigger jaws so I can do it a little bit faster. There we go. No, that's just melting the rubber on it. That's not doing any good. Okay, that got really warm, I guess. Should have grabbed my welding glove. Made this a little bit quicker. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this for a second and take this guy off. Okay, got it all taken apart. <clears throat> Turns out it was a little bit stronger even with the Loctite off. So what I did is you can grab just a, another nut or you can take the, the clevis that comes with it. I happen to have some uh, jam nuts and connectors because I need it for the build I'm doing. Tighten them together, lock on to it, and then spin it off. Here's the uh, piece I was talking about. I think it's somewhere around a 15 mil, but it works. So now that it's taken apart, I'm gonna show you how to put it back together. Now I'm gonna do it without the rod, but it's the same, same principle. You have the base. Now for the base, you have the guide on the bottom. For the guide, that looks like a little Martian spaceship, the part that's smaller goes inside, see if you can see it, as such. Now normally you'd have the rod still connected to this guy, but you don't have to do it right now. So what you're going to do is you're going to take yourself the lower uh, spring perch. The spring you're using, and like I said, there's three different sizes. You have the inner spring, the middle spring, and the outer spring. For this one, I'm using a middle spring, so it's going to sit right in there then i'm going to have the upper clut or perch which would normally have the rod on it you would just slide right down on top but i don't have that then you would have the top so what we're going to do is take that put the locking ring on top here put a little bit of pressure now i got strong hands so if you well i guess not that strong hands you can take it and you want to start the threads now, if you have a 26 pounder, you might need a, a buddy to help you or something because they got some load on these guys. But, yeah, there we go. Get it started. Make sure it doesn't cross it. That's most important. Make sure it's nice and even all the way around because if it cross threads with this aluminum body, you screwed it up. You got to go back and fix the thread. So make sure it's going on correctly. And then go ahead and tighten her down. Do not put Loctite on this. No Loctite. 
9999. There is enough pressure on us as it is. Now, right now I got mostly tight, or as much as I can by hand. When you're done, you're gonna go put it back on a vise, grab your tool from Turbo Smart, or in my case, a Canon plug wrench, or a screwdriver, whatever you have, or a giant pair of uh, vice grips with a, a rag or something, and you're gonna tighten it the rest of the way. But that's how to reassemble it. And then if you want to, afterwards, like I said, you can actually just take this guy, put it right back in there, thread it back in, there you go. Now, before you do your final assembly, remember to take some high temp red Loctite, just a wee bit. Now you can see how much they put on it from the factory, but just to drop on there, slide that guy up in there, tighten it down. Now don't do that when you're doing the fitting because you want to be able to remove it, but for final assembly, if you're taking it off like me, a little bit of red Loctite to make sure this little sewn bit don't move around, bam, there you go. And that is how you take apart, change springs, and do everything on the TurboSmart IWG 75 wastegate.